my talk today um, is titled By Your Faith. And it's something that I've been thinking a lot about the last couple of weeks because I've had so many people say to me, you know, isn't anything ever going to get better? I just keep thinking things are getting are getting worse and worse. And of course, they're talking about COVID. They're talking about political chaos. They're talking about whatever they happen to see in their lives that they that that they don't like right now. And and so that's been kind of playing in playing in my mind. And um, and I as I, I thought about it, I thought, you know, if COVID were eliminated tomorrow and please God, let it be, um, that we would then find something else to focus upon, something else that we might worry about. Um, it's it, it, it's a, a human condition, it seems, that we do those kinds of things. And then we start to, to worry that we, have, we don't have enough faith, um, you know, that, that the, the things that we believe in are, you know, getting further and further away. We don't feel connected to God. And and as, as I thought about this, and I think I've probably said this before, we every one of us has faith, whether we know it or not, whether we're conscious of it or not. Because uh, if, if, if we think that COVID is going to get worse and worse, then we have faith in that. Um, if we think that the political situation is going to get worse, then we have faith in that. Whatever it is, whether it's, whether it's something good or something bad, is, is an example of our faith. You know, we, um, we may lack faith in our ability to do things. And so that is faith that we cannot do those things. Faith that we are, uh, you know, not competent enough or not educated enough or not smart, whatever, whatever it might be. And, and so, so what, what, we, what we need to remember is that, you know, I mean, that I call that misplaced faith. Uh, you know, because, because the thing is that what we really have our faith and belief system in and the things that we're worrying about, we're just creating more of the same. And that's the last thing that we want to do. And the good thing about it is that even though we may not be many in numbers, that when one person changes a thought, a mind raises, raises his or her vibration, then that is many times more powerful than just... Uh, you know, than, uh, than a hundred other people, maybe a thousand other people, because we are raising the vibration of the planet as we do, and vice versa. If people are, if people are focusing up on all that is wrong, all that is, all that is bad as they see it right now, then, then we're creating more of the same. So it's, it's really, really important for us to get, to get a handle on faith and to realize that somebody's not going to walk up and give us this beautiful box that is gift wrapped and has a lovely big bow on it. And we put it under the Christmas tree. And on Christmas morning, we're going to open it up and out springs faith. And it becomes, it's all around us and it's everywhere, everywhere inside us. It's just not going to happen. Um, it's not the way, it's not the way that it works. So we can't be sitting around waiting for it. It's something that we need to be cultivating. And, you know, we're, we're all seekers, you know, we're all, always seeking to know more, to learn more, to be more, uh, to be more spiritually connected, especially. And, and I, I, there's a, a wonderful quote of Rumi's that I just love. He's my favorite poet. And he said, I have been a seeker and I still am. I have stopped asking the books and the stars. And I started listening to the teachings of my soul. I love that. I've been a seeker and still am, but I have stopped asking the books and the stars. And I started listening to the teachings of my own soul. And that's what we need to remember. Faith is not somewhere out there. God is not somewhere out there. It is, it is in, inside us. And, and so whatever it is we're focused upon, and you know, you know I say this all the time, whatever we're focused upon is expanding. And so if we're focusing upon the good that we want to see, if we're creating that mental image, that mental equivalent, as Ernest Holmes calls it, a spiritual prototype, a vision, it doesn't matter what you want to call it, but if we're creating what we want our world to look like in our minds, then it is done in the invisible. And if we stay focused upon that, it is taking form. And we can have absolute faith in that. You know, think about things that 
that you do have faith in, that you just know without without even giving it any any serious thought. You know the sun's going to come up every morning. There may be clouds, there may be rain. You know, if you if we're living here, we know that some days there's going to be rain. Um, but but the thing is that that we know those things are going to happen. They're, they are natural laws. And uh, and we know that, you know, as the leaves are falling off the trees, that it's autumn, but the rain is making the grass so green. And and in the spring, we're going to have cherry blossoms again on the, on the trees and, and everything is just going to be alive with color and with all of that beauty. I always think it's kind of like a fashion show in the spring. Every day you wake up and there's some new beautiful plant that's in bloom. So those things we can have faith in. And if we, if, if we start working with that, being grateful, being grateful for those things that we know are coming, then we are, we're cultivating our faith. You know, we stay focused upon the things that you know, and then start adding things to it. It's really an important thing to do. Remembering that we are all containers of God. And again, I say that I think every week we're containers of God. You know, as Ernest Holmes said, when, when he was asked if he believed in life after death, and he said, no, he said, because I don't believe in death. Um, and, and that's what we need to remember is that we are eternal beings. And at the present time, we are housed by a physical, a physical body. But that's not the truth of who we are. It's, it's what enables us to move around this earth and to do what it is that we're here to do. But the essential part of us never changes, never goes away. You know, hopefully when we get back to the other side, we're all knowing again and not having doubts and not lacking faith because there's so much wonder and awe in everything that we see. But the thing is that we have to remember that while we're here, we've got all this power within us and that we can use it. And that, you know, there are belief systems that so many people have, and you know, and I probably, I have to include myself in them, but you know, I have a friend who, um, uh, who's, who's a very healthy man. And uh, he, he said that heart disease runs in his family. Every single person in his family has heart disease. But he, he, he said, you know, I'm the, I'm the exception. And then he added, well, for the time being, and I said, hush your mouth, you know, listen to what you're saying. You get the chance to break that right here and right now. There's no reason why you have to have heart disease either. You are the exception right now. You can start a new pattern in your family by, by, by remembering that you are healthy and by telling yourself every day that you're healthy and that you have a healthy heart. And and, and as we were talking, I was talking about, um, uh, about Bruce Lipton and how Bruce Lipton, um, you know, a, a spiritual scientist, uh, says that we can change our DNA. And isn't that incredible to think about, that we can change our DNA? And, and uh, he, he says we control our genomes. Our genes don't control us. And we have to remember that. They don't control us. We get to make choices. And, and of course, that, that has to do with our environment and everything else, because the way, that we, the, the way that we live, the way that we eat, the way that we exercise, all of those things control, control, um, control our genes in some way. But we can constantly program them with, with positive thoughts, you know, with, by making life choices that are, are really good for us. Um, and, and we know what those things are. Sometimes we just think, oh, well, maybe I'll start it tomorrow. That's, that's not the way it has to be. It's not the way it has to be with, with the physical things that we do, but also with the mental things that we do, with our minds. Let us remember what it is to be thinking in a positive way all the time and to know that we can make such a difference. I mean, this is what our teaching is all about. When Bruce Lipton says we can change our DNA, Everything is possible according to what we believe, according to what we think, according to what we have passion for. And that's something that we have to be thinking about um, and, and be, be conscious of our thoughts every day. And so when we're, when, when we're looking at, at our faith, we, 
basically, if we're feeling that we've been lacking it, we need to take this one step at a time, you know, and, and, and to do it with spiritual reading, with, with, um, with prayer, with meditation. I know I say that a lot, but, but it really takes us to a place where, where it starts to grow within us until all of a sudden one day we really feel it. And when we feel that inside us, we know, we absolutely know that we are on track and we know that God is with us every moment of every day and that nothing is ever going to change that. We cannot allow ourselves to become paralyzed with fear, no matter what that happens to be. We cannot allow that to happen. You know, love is what conquers fear. And that's the state that we have to really, really get into. And, and we, are, we are asked to take our spiritual selves out into the world and to do something with it. You know, to, to help to make a difference. Um, because as we believe that the sun will rise and as we believe in all of the things in nature, we need to believe that we are here to make a difference and that we can make a difference. And I, for many years, I had, a, I had something framed on my wall in my office and uh, it was something by Edward Hale. And he said, I am only one, but still I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. And so that always made me ask, what is it that is mine to do? And, you know, and we can't do everything. Our center alone can't do everything, but we can do something. And we have moved in that direction in the last, uh, in the last little while. Um, I had a, a text from Nelson and he has, Nelson Brunansky, and he has arrived in Cuba. And of course, what we agreed to do was to give him a thousand dollars to take to Cuba for a Cuban family because the people there are starving because of the trade restrictions that have been placed upon Cuba by the US government. They got most of their food from Venezuela and, um, uh, and Venezuela cannot now trade with Cuba. And the land is, so, Cuba is so hot and there's not an, enough water. And so, so people can't grow their own food or not very much. And what they can grow, what they can get locally typically goes to hotels. So people are starving. Children are dying of malnutrition. And this is just in the last few years. This, I mean, you know, I mean, they never had an abundance of wealth, but, but people had, had food and, uh, and they had clothing and they had shelter and so on. And Nelson helps to support a family of, of four in Cuba. And so this was going toward that family. On, but what he texted me was he made the decision that it's his to do to support that family. And so he's going to distribute that thousand dollars among three other families um, that can help them along the way. And is, he's working to raise more money to help more families. You know, that is what one person can do. That's what Nelson can do. And that is what our congregation could do. We were able to tithe that thousand dollars that is, is, is help, going to now help somewhat three families um, in Cuba. You know, there, if, if, we, if we work together, we can do a lot. But even working on our own, we can choose something that we can do that is going to make a difference in the world. And, you know, it's those sm small steps that we take until we can take leaps of faith and know that God is in control, that God in us controls our destiny. And, and as we start to do these things, our faith begins to grow because we're seeing good things being done and we're participating in good things that are being done. And as we do that, we begin to have a greater faith in humanity and a greater faith in ourselves. And it's a good place to start. It's a great place. You know, I, I um, was remembering um, how much one person can make a big difference very, very quickly. And social media really has a lot to do with that. I think it was two years ago in Australia, um, there was... Um, a member of ISIS who held 17 Australian people hostage. Um, and, and, um, uh, and I mean, they were eventually released and everybody was okay. But Muslims became very fearful. Muslims in Australia became very fearful. 
because this person was was um, um, antagonistic toward toward Muslim Muslims and was was basically a racist. And one woman sent out a tweet um, when everybody was fearful. One woman sent out a tweet, and this was when people were still being being held hostage. And she said, if you are Muslim and you are taking public transportation, I will ride with you today. And within three hours, that tweet was, was sent out, reposted 150,000 times in three hours. 150,000 people were saying, if you are Muslim and you're taking public transportation, I will ride with you today. That just gives me God bumps. But more, there was a, a woman who got on a bus and there was a Muslim woman on the bus and she had taken her hijab off and, and it was down under her chin. And the woman looked at, and, 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 the, and the Muslim woman had her head down and was just, you know, her, her kind of her arms around, around herself looking very vulnerable and very afraid. And the woman went over to her and sat down and, and said to her, put your hijab back on and put her arms around her and held her. And the two women cried. That is, that is a massive thing to do. You know, we may, we may, may think of that as being something simple, something, something small, but that act of love is just so phenomenal. And it, it moved me, it still moves me beyond belief knowing that all of that goodness is out there. And yet we tend to look at the things that are on the news that, that are, are bad. There are these really good things that are happening. There are good people out there. And, you know, I was thinking one message on Twitter, one message on Twitter and terror backfired into love. That's what we need to do. We need to have terror backfiring into love. I was watching an interview on television the other night, an hour interview with Barack Obama, who has written a new book. And he wasn't alone. There were three others with him. Two of them were young men. And about halfway through the interview, I don't remember whether it was Barack Obama or whether it was the interview, asked the young men if they had had the talk yet. And I kind of looked, and then because when I was growing up, the talk had to do with sexuality, and uh, and and the young men both nodded their heads yes. And he asked them what it was Barack Obama, and he asked he asked them what uh, what happened. And one of the one of the boys said, um, he said I got so frightened, and he said I don't have my driver's license. And he said, and I probably won't ever have a driver's license because my father explained to me that if I got stopped by the police that I could get killed. And I thought, Whew, what kind of a talk is that that people have to have with their kids? You know, why, why are we living in a world like this? We need to move beyond the terror and we really need to be, be, be putting our love out there. And you know, there's something else that Rumi said that I, I, well, he said a lot of things, but one of the things that I really love is, is that there's a secret medication for those who hurt so bad that they cannot hope. A secret medication for those who hurt so bad that they cannot hope. And that's look as long as you can at someone that you love. And I thought about that. You know, if, if we sit and look at someone that we deeply love, our children, a partner, um, a friend, and just keep looking at that person, the love just swells in our hearts. And such an amazing thing to do if we are, if whatever we're feeling that is negative in our lives, if we can but look at someone we love and focus upon that person that we love, you know, if you're a mom, imagine when you first held your little baby in your arms and the love that you felt there. And just, just let that love grow and then transfer it out to people everywhere. And particularly to somebody that you feel that uh, you, you're unable to forgive for whatever they happen to do to you. 
you know, let us, let us just reach out with that love. Let us forgive because that's a big, big step in expanding our faith and expanding our, our love on this planet. You know, our horizons have to be bigger than the headlines. Our horizons have to be on God. You know, look up, look up. I don't mean that God is up there exclusively. But what I have learned is that when we're looking down and thinking about something, if we're thinking about something that is really bothering us and we're looking down, then that thing starts to, to amplify. If we're looking straight ahead, we're just kind of, you know, still in that same space. But the moment that we lift our eyes upward, there's hope. There's, there's something else that happens to us physically when we raise our eyes upward. Emma Curtis Hopkins taught this. Um, she was one of Ernest Holmes' teachers, so imagine how long ago that was. Look up. You know, it brings to mind, uh, um, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which come with my health, health, help, <laughs> and health too, probably. Um, but but we, need to, we need to remember that there is a higher place. There's a higher place for, to which we can focus. There's a higher place um, in our lives. We, we can choose to live in that higher consciousness, in that higher self, and to, to rise up into love not fear. Fear doesn't do anything for us. But love conquers everything. We need to listen, listen in our hearts for what it is that is ours to do. And remember that by your faith, you will be healed. That's, you know, another piece of scripture by your faith you will be healed now that doesn't just mean that you're going to have a healthy body that means that anything in your life that isn't working for you is going to be healed by your faith so i just invite you all to start working on and expanding your faith especially during these troubled times knowing that we are going to get to the other side of this and when we do, it's going to be wonderful. We'll crack open the champagne and have a party. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time when we can all say we are now safe to go out again. But we can also look at blessings during this time. I heard, I heard the other day that um, the, that flu is, is down to just a small, tiny fraction of what it was in previous years. And that's because we're wearing masks. You know, we're learning things from this pandemic as well. And so let us look for gifts that we might find in it and let us look at the gifts of our friendships and our faith and our, our ability to come together. Something that, um, you know, that we might not have done in such an appreciative way. And if this had not happened to us. Another favorite poet of mine is Hafiz and I want to, to close with, with this reading. The beloved has gone completely wild. He has poured himself into me. I am blissful and drunk and overflowing. Dear world, draw life from my sweet body. Dear wayfaring souls, come and drink your fill of liquid rubies, for God has made my heart. God has made each of our hearts. By our faith, we will remember this, and so it is.